Hello everyone. Today we're diving into the world of Nikon Z6 III to discuss some issues that made the Nikon Z6 II a functional yet problematic mirrorless camera. I recently took my Nikon Z6 II on a field trip to the museum. I want to give viewers an insider's look into problems that the Nikon Z6 II had and how I learned how to overcome them since I first bought it three years ago. Hello, my name is Vaughn. I'm a longtime Nikon user. If you watched any of my videos, you would know that I started with DSLRs and slowly transitioned to mirrorless cameras. My first Nikon mirrorless camera was this Nikon Z6 II. In today's video, I wanna show you why I'm thinking about trading this camera and purchasing a Nikon Z6 III if it comes out, it's rumored. Please do me a favor and subscribe to my channel so I can bring you more content about Nikon cameras. Now I wanna talk about the issues that plague most Nikon Z6 II owners. I can't name them all because we'll be here all day. Also, I will mix in some rumored specs from the Nikon Z6 III for comparison. Every Nikon user uses their camera for different things. I use my Nikon Z6 II for my event photography business and for casual use. Over the years, I have learned to be patient and carry a second body of backup. The Z9 has less issues, but I need a camera that is lightweight and doesn't create files that take a while to process and call. So watch this video and learn problem solving skills with the Nikon Z6 II. So let's get started. The first issue I noticed while at the museum was EVF blackout. Now this has been a recurring problem since I had the camera, but I've learned how to work around it. The electronic viewfinder blackout is especially noticeable when capturing moving subjects. I had my uh, grandkids and my wife and I was trying to capture their kids while they were playing. Having them moving around so quickly made it hard to keep up with them uh, when you're getting constant blackout in the viewfinder. Now know this camera is marketed as a sports or action camera. My Nikon Z8 has blackout free shooting. It's a big difference when you compare the two. <laughs> big difference. With the rumored XB7 processor, the Nikon Z6 III should have the same characteristics of the Nikon ZF. The ZF has minimal blackout. So blackout will be slightly better than the ZF but not on par with a stack sensor that is in the Z9 and Z8. It is rumored that Nikon Z6 III will have dual stream tech and a faster processor with faster readout speeds. Another problem that crippled the Nikon Z6 II was its video capabilities. Users have reported an anomaly in the video mode display. Sometimes this shows inaccurate information about video quality remaining capacity and audio levels based on the display setting. Also, if you're in video mode, there is no exposure meter. Come on, Icon. I paid too much for this camera for it not to have an exposure meter. Add an exposure meter if you want to be known as a true hybrid camera. While using this camera at the museum, I couldn't meter the dark surroundings. I use the exposure settings from the photo mode. I also use my iPhone 15 Pro Max to compare two exposures out of camera from this camera and this iPhone. So for starters, the camera was an auto ISO and auto white balance. So I expected too much from the camera due to its processing power. It just couldn't keep up. Now with the Nikon Z6 III and its processing power, it will have 6K 60P in raw and 4K 60P full width ProRes raw. And that's a rumor also, so don't quote me. I have the Nikon Z9. Now if you use Kodaks like me, I'm always trying to save space on my hard drive. So I tried to use in raw, but it doesn't have support from Adobe Premiere. That's what I use. I don't want to purchase DaVinci Resolve to render video files. I have a video where I used a Nikon Z6 II with a Nikon 
Z70 to 200 millimeter 2.8 to video my daughter's wedding. Next up is issue number three, autofocus performance. Wired through museum and AFC mode, subject tracking for humans, it required me to manually adjust the lens and change the exposure. You will notice in the two photos where the camera had two different ISO settings, meaning the camera meted the same scene differently in each shot. Now I need Nikon to solve this problem. I'm used to it now, but I need the focus point to turn green when the camera gets in focus. Another thing is if I'm in a fast moving situation, I have to switch to single point autofocus or dynamic autofocus due to the slower sensor speed. It just can't keep up. Now this is a recurring problem. The focus point would flash if the camera was buffering after a burst of shots. Now, I know a lot of Nikon camera fanboys out there will say, this guy's a plant or doesn't know Nikon cameras. My goal in this video is to be honest with new users, not to scare them. Some advice to remember, you will need skill and repetition with these cameras to overcome issues that come with technology. Even with the problems I'm addressing in this video concerning the Nikon Z6 II, I've created an event photography portfolio over the past seven years using Nikon DSLRs and mirrorless cameras. A majority of my portfolio was created with the Nikon Z6 II. None of these cameras are perfect, not even my Z9. The new Nikon Z6 III is rumored to have 299 points of autofocus. More focus points, the better the subject detection. We will wait and see how that works out. Leave those comments on what you think Nikon should improve on their next generation of cameras. While you're leaving those comments, hit that like button. I'd really appreciate it. Now, issue number four, shutter lock. A few users have faced shutter locking issues with an error message prompting them to press the shutter again. Now, I've noticed this issue happen when the camera gets hot when using video and photo continuously when switching between the two. I usually just shut down the camera and open the battery door and change batteries to let some heat out. Plus, in the Nikon Z6 III, it will have two card slots, one ZF Express card and one SD card. Make sure when you're buying your memory cards, you don't buy the cheap ones and make sure they're on the compatibility list because cheap cards don't dissipate heat. Issue number five, low light autofocus. While I was in a certain section of the museum, the camera took a few scans to focus on an exhibit. I snapped this photo thinking the camera had exposed. I have experienced numerous autofocus channels in low light conditions throughout the years. Fortunately, there's a hidden menu that might help address this issue. I made a video that goes into details about how to improve the Nikon Z6 II low light issues. Both the Nikon Z6 II and the Z6 III will have a 24 megapixel sensor, which is standard for cameras with good low light capabilities. While I was at the museum, someone was nice enough to take a group photo of me and my family, but I had a decision to make. Do I give them the Nikon Z6 II or the iPhone? Think about it for a moment and subscribe while you're thinking about it. And if you guessed right, I handed that person my iPhone because everyone knows how to use an iPhone. Mirrorless cameras are a little complicated. While the Nikon Z6 II boasts impressive features, it's essential to be aware of these reported issues. As with any technology, it's crucial to stay informed and consider these factors when making a decision. Even though the Nikon Z6 III and future Nikon cameras will be more advanced, it will help you if you keep an open mind and don't think new technologies don't have issues. Thanks for watching this video and watch my other videos on Nikon topics.